How about you? Yes, I did, definitely. But it's also good. nice to be back to work. <laughs> That's good. So you're doing trig now? Yep. Okay. Where do you want to start? Can we just start from the beginning of the page and work right now? Sure. All right. So the v exact value of the six trigonometric functions. So how are we going to do this? Let's draw a picture of this angle. The angle they're talking about is that angle there, right? Greater, greater than 90 degrees. It's an angle that's in the second quadrant. But the real secret of answering these problems are to figure out what this reference angle is, alpha, right there. In other words, the angle that is made with the x-axis. So like the supplementary? Well, it is supplementary, but we don't even care what that angle is. We, we don't need to know the angle. Because all we need to know is the trig functions. Well, if I drop a vertical from that point right there, and they're telling me with this x and y coordinate that this must be 8, this must be 15, and this has to be 17. You see why? Mm -hmm. Now tell me what the sine of alpha is. Um, no clue. Sokotoa. Just read it off my graph. So the sign is what? Um, opposite hypotenuse. So what is the sign of alpha? Uh, 15 over 17. Yes. Is it positive or negative? Uh, negative. 15 no, positive. is positive, right? Yeah. And this is a unit circle, so the hypotenuse is always positive. The only thing that takes on positive and negative are the x and the y coordinates. Mm -hmm. Okay. So what's the cosine of alpha? Um... Ka is adjacent over hypotenuse. Would it be 8 over 17? Correct. And now let's figure out the plus or minus sign on that. Is the 8 a positive or a negative? Positive. No, it's in the negative, negative direction, right? That's the x-axis. That's the y-axis. That's a negative 8. In other words, this point right there has a negative x-coordinate, as is evident by that, negative 8 seventeenths. But you can see it from looking at this triangle. In other words, the x-coordinate is negative. The hypotenuse is always positive. Remember that. Uh, the unit circle is basically your first exposure to polar coordinates. And with polar coordinates, the ray is always positive, no matter which quadrant it's in. So I can swing this thing around everywhere, and the hypotenuse is always positive. But the x and the y, sometimes they're positive, sometimes they're negative. You just have to see from the picture what is what. Now, what's the tangent of alpha? Mm. So the cosine was negative 8 seventeenths. It would be 15 over 18, and it would be positive. 15 over 8? 15 over, yeah. Positive, plus or minus? Positive. Well, the 15 is positive. It's going in an up direction, but the 8 is still negative. So positive divided by negative is negative. Okay. Now, let's look at the other three trig function. What's the reciprocal of tangent? Which trig function? Uh, arctan. Cotan. Cotan. If cotan is the reciprocal of tan, what's the cotan value? 
negative 8 over 15. What's the reciprocal of cosine? Uh, negative 17 over 8. Well, what's the term? What's the trig function name? Uh, it's either secant or cosecant. Which one? Secant. And that's negative 17 over 8. What's the trig function that's the reciprocal of sine? Um, 17 over 15, and that's a uh, cosecant. And the reciprocals always have the same plus or minus sign as their reciprocal does. You'll notice that if you take any number and take its reciprocal, the sign never changes. So the sine and the cosecant are both going to have the same plus or minus. If the sine is plus, the cosecant's plus. If the cosine is negative, the secant is negative. And if the tangent is negative, then the cotangent is negative. Mm -hmm. In all cases. And, in fact, one way to look at the unit circle is all students take calculus. Have you heard that? No, but... Here's what it means. It means if I'm in quadrant one, all six trig functions are positive. If I'm in quadrant two... Only sine and its reciprocal are positive. Everything else is negative. If I'm in quadrant three, only tangent is positive and its reciprocal. And if I'm in quadrant four, only cosine is positive. And it's a uh, reciprocal too? And it's reciprocal. In other words, these actually, if you wanted to be perfect, that would say cosecant. That would say cotangent. And that would say... Uh, secant, but then you wouldn't have all students take calculus. So they leave off the secondary functions when they come up with this little anagram just to make it easy to memorize. You can always figure out that the reciprocal has to carry the same plus or minus sign. But the way to do all of these problems is to figure out that reference, draw your triangle, and then solve. Okay? So, number two is pretty easy because it's all in the first quadrant. So, there's something else here that's true about, well, doesn't really say that this is a unit circle. So, but here's the thing, and it's worth, it's worth knowing this. In the unit circle, that's always 1, correct? Uh-huh. Okay. So, if I drop and create a triangle, and I call that theta, this would be the x-coordinate. That would be the y-coordinate of this point, correct? That point is x comma y. Uh -huh. What's the cosine of theta equal to? Um... It would be... According to my triangle, x over what? y. x over 1. Adjacent over hypotenuse. What's the sine of theta equal to? Um, it would be y over x. y over 1. What? It's always over, uh, sines and cosines are always one short side divided by the hypotenuse. So that's y over 1. And now notice what we have. In the unit circle, this is always cosine of theta. And this is always sine of theta. So when they give you these points like they did, well, the very first thing I know is that the cosine of theta is 12 thirteenths and the sine of theta is 5 thirteenths. Because the x-coordinate is equal to the cosine of theta. The y-coordinate is equal to the sine of theta. As long as we're talking a unit circle. Okay? So, I can label this triangle now. I know that x has to be 12, 
this is not a unit circle because their hypotenuse is 13. So this is a circle that has a radius of 13. But again, my x-coordinate is always positive. It's going to the right. My y-coordinate is always positive. It's going up. So no matter which trig function I'm talking about here, they're always going to be positive. So tell me what we already know what sine and cosine are. In other words, looking at this triangle, we have the sine of theta equals 5 thirteenths by definition, because of that point, because the y-coordinate is the sine of that angle. And the cosine of that angle is the x-coordinate, 12 thirteenths. So what's the tangent of theta? The tangent would be um, 5 over 12. Okay. And what's the reciprocal of sine? What uh, 13 over 15. What's the name of the function? Uh, cosecant. Cosecant. Notice one thing here. Really worth remembering. Cotangent always goes with tangent. So the only thing you have to know is, does secant go with cosine or does it go with sine? Well, notice the S and the C, and the C and the S. So S's don't ever go together, and C's don't ever go together. In other words, you're never going to make the mistake of thinking the reciprocal of sine is secant, because that would be two S's. You with me? Uh -huh. Makes it a little easier to remember which one goes with which one. And I know you know the answers. Each of these is just the reciprocal. So let's go on to three. Now on three, the ray is here. The angle is here. Which quadrant are we in? The uh, fourth. Okay. And this is the reference angle, which I'm going to call alpha. I'm going to call the original angle theta, the big one. But I'm going to call that little reference angle, it's called a reference angle because wherever your ray is, whatever angle is made with the x-axis, that's the reference angle. And you can actually figure out everything by creating that triangle. Well, this point right here is 12 over 13. Uh, minus 5 over 13. So dimension this little triangle for me. What's this short side that's the dotted line? Um, let's see, that would be... What's the hypotenuse? I don't know. 13. In other words, remember this is the cosine of theta. How would you find the hypotenuse? By looking at the, the denominator of these fractions. Okay. Notice in the first one the hypotenuse was 17. In the second one it was 13. It's 13 in the third one and it's 5 in the fourth one. So whatever that denominator is, that's the hypotenuse. And now this becomes a 5, 12, 13 triangle. With me? Yep. Is 12 positive or minus? Mm, that would be positive. Is 5 positive or negative? It's negative. Correct, because it's going down. Anything below the x-axis is going to be a negative. So, when we go to look at our... Uh, sine of theta would be... Now, you can actually figure out what the sine of alpha is. It's going to be the same number as the sine of theta, 
The only thing that's different is the plus or minus sign. So let's look at this little triangle here and figure out what the sine of alpha is. Um, it would just be 5 over 13, but positive. No, the 5 is a negative, right? So it would be 13 over 5. No, no, no. It's minus 5 over 13. In other words, the 5 dimension is a negative dimension. The 13 is a positive dimension, always. The hypotenuse is always positive, no matter which quadrant. What's the cosine of theta? Um, that would be 12 over 13. Good. What's the tangent of theta? Uh, um, that would be 13 over 12. Tangent is opposite over adjacent. Oh, no. It would be 12 over 5. Opposite over adjacent. 13 over 5. Well, there's the opposite. Negative 5. Over the adjacent, positive 12. Oh. So it's minus 5 twelfths. You see why? Yeah. Also, we can we don't have to look at the drawing to figure this out. If I remember that all students take calculus, well in the fourth quadrant, the only thing that's positive is cosine. So sine has to be negative, tangent has to be negative, and cosine has to be positive. So is all you really need to do is be looking at this triangle right here that I drew and dimensioned. Once you dimension it, now you don't even care if that's a negative 5. Just figure out what the six functions are of theta and then use all students take calculus to attach a plus or minus sign to it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. This this way of drawing it as part of a, a unit circle kind of picture is the harder way to really figure it out. But that's where the all students take calculus comes from. Okay, let's look at number four. The angle is this one. But the only angle we really care about, I'm not even going to label that theta. They, they're labeling that theta. That's why I don't want to use theta. So I'm going to call it alpha again. Greek letter. Connect that point to the x-axis, making your little reference triangle. And now based on these numbers, can I dimension that triangle? Um, What's the hypotenuse? Uh, your hypotenuse is 5. What's the side opposite alpha? 4. Correct, because the sine of alpha is 4 fifths. No, it isn't. It's 3 fifths. Right. Notice that this right number is the sine, the left number is the cosine. That means that has to be 4 and that has to be 3. Now, just make sure you understand how I got that. In other words, by looking at their x and y coordinate, remember the x coordinate is the cosine one. The y coordinate is the sine one. So I know that the sine of theta has to be minus three-fifths. Well, it's in the third quadrant, so I know it's got to be negative. And the cosine is also negative in the third quadrant, so I know it's going to be negative. But it allows me to know where to put the three and where to put the four. Because they're telling me, always remember that when you see these coordinates, the first one is cosine, the second one is sine. So this tells me that the cosine of my angle is 4 fifths. Well, the only way that's true is if my 4 goes there, not opposite the angle. 
once you dimension the triangle, and by the triangle I mean this triangle right here, once you dimension it, now it's quite easy to figure out all six functions. Let's go through them. You've already done sine and, well, now we'll start from the top. What's the sine of theta now? Not alpha, but theta. Uh, um, to get the number, you can read the triangle. To get the uh, sine, you just have to figure out the quark. Would it just be opposite over hypotenuse? So it would be 6 over 10? Well, 3 over 5. Where would you get the 6 and the 10? Well, I just doubled the 5. Don't need to. In other words, use, use, you wouldn't want to double the 5 because that actually is a bigger circle. This circle has a radius of 5. Uh, so just use the direct ratio. If you can reduce it, you want to. In other words, if these were 6, 8, 10, then the sine of theta would be 3 fifths. It wouldn't be 6 tenths. It would be 3 fifths. Always reduce. Okay. So it's 3 fifths is the number based just on that triangle. And now tell me what its sine is in the third quadrant. It's sine in the third quadrant. Uh, that would be... All students take calculus. So it's negative, right? What's the cosine of theta? Uh, that would be... Uh, 4 over 5. What's its sine? What's its plus uh, or minus? Also negative. also negative. Now look at the picture. The x-coordinate is the cosine of theta. The y-coordinate is the sine of theta, right? We didn't need to do any analysis at all to come up with sine and cosine. Just read the coordinates. That's what they are. And that's a huge point in trig, is to understand that these coordinates, that first coordinate is the cosine of that angle. Now, the tangent, a little harder. That one's going to be helpful to look at the triangle. What's the tangent of alpha, first of all? That gives us the numerical part of the answer. Everything starts with this. You want to be so familiar with that that you don't have to think for three seconds even, to figure out what tangent is. Uh, you wanna, you don't want to memorize trig. You want to know it. You don't memorize your name. If I ask you your name, you don't have to access a part of your brain and know that it's Jake Ziegler. You just automatically know it, right? Uh, you want to get that good with trig functions. You don't want to have, when somebody says sine, you don't want to have, say, okay, Sokotoa sine is opposite over hypotenuse. That's accessing a lot of information. You just want to know it. You want to know that the sine of an angle of a right triangle is the opposite side over the hypotenuse. Cosine is the adjacent side over the hypotenuse. Tangent's the opposite over the adjacent. So in this case, what's tangent? of alpha. What's opposite to alpha? Um, beta? No, look at the triangle, the red triangle, look at alpha. What side is opposite alpha? Uh, th Three. Yeah. Right? What's adjacent to alpha? Um, Four. Yeah. Actually, both 4 and 5 are adjacent to alpha, but when they use the word A in Sokotoa, they always mean the side that's adjacent that is not the hypotenuse. So the only side that's really adjacent to alpha is the 4 side. 
So the tangent is 3 over 4, plus or minus? Uh, minus. All students take calculus. No, no positive, sorry. Tangent. That means tangent's positive in the third quadrant. Notice why. The 3 is a negative. And the 4 is a negative. Negative divided by negative is positive. So that's why tangent's positive in the third quadrant is because the x dimension is negative and the y dimension is negative. Uh -huh. Okay? But the secret to all of these problems are to get that reference triangle labeled completely all three sides and the angle and then just apply SOHCAHTOA and all students take calculus and you come up with the answer every time. Hmm. So there really is a pattern with trig that is far easier than what they try to teach you. Here's what they try to do. Maybe your school doesn't do this, but this is typically what they give your average trig student. They split this circle up into 16 different slices and they want you to memorize the coordinates of all six trig functions at all points. Yeah, they want us to do that. Crazy. Yeah. Crazy to do that. They should not do it that way. Nobody memorizes 16 things very easily. Mm -hmm. However, if I give you a bunch of groups of three and four things, you can memorize it. Well, one thing is all students take calculus. That's four things to memorize. That's all. The other thing is when you're in the second quadrant, the angle you're referring to is 180 minus theta. When you're in the third quadrant, it's theta minus 180. And when you're in the fourth quadrant, it's 360 minus theta. And what each of these gives you is that reference angle. Not theta, but it's alpha. But the trig function is the same numerical value for the reference angle as it is theta, always. And so this 180 minus theta, if I have an angle like that, what this is, is 180 minus theta, just like you said, it's supplementary to theta. But all six trig functions have the same numerical value of alpha as they do theta. It's just that you still have to apply the plus or minus to come up with the correct plus or minus sign. It's difficult talking about trig because when you say sign, you don't know whether I'm saying S-I-N or S-I-G-N. And they mean completely different things. So I usually try to avoid saying S-I-G-N as sign, and I usually say, is it plus or minus? But by memorizing four things at a time or three things at a time, you can memorize the unit circle piece of cake. You can do it in 10 minutes. I can show you how to label all 16 points in 10 minutes using this very simple technique of memorizing three or four things at a time. And you're going to memorize three or four things of three or four things at a time. And that's going to allow you to answer all 16 slots on this unit circle and all six trig functions. That's 6 times 16. That's 96 things they want you to memorize. 96. And they want you to memorize it like you were memorizing a bunch of phone numbers? No way. I gave you a credit card to memorize that's got 16 digits in it. You're not going to memorize 16 digits. You're going to break it up into four groups of four, right? Yeah. That's why credit cards come like that. They don't put all 12 digits or 16 digits together. You could hardly even read it to a banker if it was like that. 
So they separate it out. And the reason is, is because you can memorize stuff. The human mind memorizes up to seven things, but you get more than seven things and it becomes really, really difficult to keep track of. So you don't ever want to memorize something that's got 96 answers and memorize it like you would memorize the first 96 names of a phone book. You just wouldn't want to do it that way. Um, so memorize groups of four or three. And that allows you to answer all 96 spots. Okay? Jake? I will talk to you next time. I'm sorry we didn't have a little more time here. We didn't get to very many problems. That's all right. That, it's helped me a lot. So I'm, I'm sure it did. The, uh, the, the basic thing of the unit circle, I, I really like to start out trig with every new student with about an hour dealing with the unit circle and nothing but the unit circle. And by the time you're done with that hour, you can answer all of your common angles. And by common, I mean multiples of 30, 45, 60, and 90. Those are the ones they expect you to know without a calculator. They don't expect you to know what the sine of 29 degrees is, but they definitely expect you to know what the sine of 30 degrees is. That's one half. Okay. Okay. All right, Jake, I'll talk to you next time. Well, thank you. Have a good night. You're welcome. You too. Bye-bye.